consider that we have this beam which is subjected to the two different loads or this one or this one in all of these shapes that you see if you want to determine bending stress and shear stress we need to determine how much is the shear and moment diagram at different locations and this is what we have learned before in statics to determine shear and moment diagram the first step is determining the reaction forces of structure to determine the reaction forces, we need to use the free body diagram concept. It means that we need to remove all the restraints and replace them with reaction forces. We basically have three types of restraints. This is what we call it the pen support. This is the graphical way we show the pen support in our problems. The pen support has two reaction forces, force in X and for force in Y direction. So in the real world, it looks more like this one so if you connect just the middle part of a beam to the support it's not able to transfer the moment and it's able just to transfer the forces and that is called as pen support okay the second type of support is this one which we call that ruler support again in the real world we are not putting a beam on top of a sphere or on top of a cylinder but we make it like this. So why this is a ruler support? Because of the whole shape, it can slide a little bit based on the given force. So it is free in the x-axis, but it is restrained on the y-axis. Note that it is restrained in both directions in the y-axis, upward or downward. And the third type is the fixed support in which we have three unknowns, two forces and one moment. And in the real world, we make it like this. What is the difference between this one and the previous shapes? We have connected both the top and the bottom part as well as the middle part. All right, so let me finalize this part. After releasing the reaction forces, we use the equilibrium equation to determine those reaction forces. We basically have three equations in 2D plane. Some of the forces in X and Y and some of the moments. Once we determine that, we can go and do the shear and moment diagram. We start with shear diagram. To do the shear diagram, we always start from the lift of structure. And we need to know how much is the initial value of the shear. To determine the initial value of the shear, we introduce rule number one. It says, at the very beginning of a beam, which is on the left side of that, there are two conditions. The initial shear value is zero if the structure is not restrained and there is no external concentrated force at that point. Look at this figure. In this figure, on the left part of that, the structure is free, it's not restrained. There is force acting on that, but that is distributed force, it is not concentrated force. So how much would be the initial value of the shear force at that point? That would be zero. Now let's consider this case. It says the initial shear is equal to the external force or reaction force otherwise. So if the, rest, if the left part of beam is restrained or if there is, there is any external force acting at that point, the initial value is equal to that external force, like this one. In this end, the beam is supported by a pen support and the value of initial Shear is equal to the reaction force at that point. All right? Rule number two, which is very important, says change in shear force from point A to B is equal to the area of continuous loading or distributed loading between these two points. So look at this figure. We know that at the very end, at the very left end of this structure, the initial value of shear is equal to the reaction force. But what would be the value of shear force when I move to the right part? This rule helps me to determine that. It says, consider the area under continuous loading and add it to the value of shear force. That gives you the value of shear force at the right end. For this specific problem, how much is the area under loading of this new distributed load? That would be W <coughs> times length, okay? And is that positive or negative? It's negative because it goes downward. So whatever the value of shear force is, I need to subtract WL from that to get to the shear force at the right end. This is very important rule here. 
Rule number three says, an external concentrated force causes a jump in shear diagram. Upward force causes an upward jump in the shear diagram. Downward force causes a downward jump in the shear diagram. Look at this beam. There is one concentrated load acting somewhere in the, bit, in the beam. If we drew the shear diagram, the shear diagram jumps when reached to that concentrated force. Because the force goes downward, the jump will be downward. Okay? These are the rules for shear. We can define a new set of rules for moment which are pretty much similar to that. For moment diagram, rule number one says, at the very beginning of a beam, at the left side again, initial moment value is zero if the structure is not restrained by a fixed support and there is no external moment at that point. So note that it is the fixed support. Initial shear is equal to the external moment or reaction moment otherwise. So if it's fixed by a restraint or if there is any moment acting at the left end, the initial value of the moment is equal to that reaction force. Okay, for this problem, the beam is restrained at the left end, but it is not fixed support. It's a pen support. So how much would be the initial value of the moment for this beam? Zero. Okay. Rule number two says, change in the bending moment from A to B is equal to the area under shear diagram between these two points. How much would be the value of bending moment, say, at point B? I need to add the area under shear diagram. Let's call it A1. The moment at this point will be equal to that A1. Area is negative, so I expect to see the moment diagram goes downward like this. How much would be the moment at C? I need to add the initial value of the moment at this point, which is MB, to the area under shear diagram. Here the area A2 is positive, so the moment increases like this. Another hint that I want to mention here is, look at the relation between the shear and moment diagram. If the shear diagram is constant, the moment diagram is linear. If the shear diagram is linear, the moment diagram is a second order polynomial. If the mo shear diagram is second order polynomial, what would be the moment diagram? The third order. So moment diagram is always one degree higher than the shear diagram. All right? And rule number three is the case where we have concentrated moments. It says, a clockwise moment causes, a, causes an upward jump in the moment diagram. A counterclockwise moment causes a downward jump in the moment diagram. So look at this figure. Here this is clockwise. So there we see upward jump in the moment diagram. And this one is <coughs> counterclockwise, so we see downward jump here. Okay. Using these rules, we can quickly and efficiently determine the shear and moment diagram for various problems.